Hi folks, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about retrieval augmented multimodal language modeling. So far we have talked about retrieval augmented generation in various ways uh, for text specifically like reg, realm, atlas, retro, right? All of those basically process text. But then there is this new model called as RACM3. It is basically based on a CM3 model and RA stands for retrieval augmentation. Uh, you know, this model is, is the first model that actually can do uh, retrieval augmentation using multimodal memories and also generate text plus images. So both things are multimodal retrieval, retrieve, retrieved memories as well as essentially, uh, you know, uh, the generated uh, generated output. OK, so here is a quick overview of how uh, this model works. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, uh, the user has a query in this particular case. Let's say the user wants to do a text to image kind of a task. So there's a caption and the user wants to generate a good image matching that caption. So the caption is liberated as sitting on bench near water. <coughs> the query goes to the retriever. Retriever in general actually retrieves from this uh, memory, mixed modal memory. So the retriever actually is a bi-encoder architecture. Um, so, you know, uh, it essentially has already stored in its memory index a whole bunch of multimodal documents. Those multimodal documents were indexed uh, using this memory document encoder, which is nothing but a clip uh, VITL14, right? Uh, so it basically takes uh, the text part. So this clip model essentially uh, encodes the text and the image part of a multimodal document separately. So given a multimodal document, you essentially take the text part, take the image part, run through this clip text encoder and the clip image encoder, take the mean pooled or the average uh, encoding, and that's basically what you store in your uh, uh, FACE MIPS index, right? So FACE is this uh, um, similarity search index and MIPS is uh, maximum inner product search. So you basically, uh, you know, uh, store it in this index. Uh, all the documents that you want to uh, that you want to store. In fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, RSCM3 actually uses 150 million text image pairs. So 150 million documents are actually stored in this memory. Right. So you use frozen clip encoder to do all of this. Now, when a query comes in like this uh, at runtime, you essentially go to uh, the the retriever is called. The retriever tries to um, find the nearest neighbors from this document index, uh, and it basically uh, finds them using this bi encoder architecture. You take the query, you also encode the query using the same mixed model encoder, the same clip encoder. You already have encoded the documents using the same mixed model encoder. Uh, you find those documents which have a good cosine similarity, and you uh, retrieve up to a maximum of three documents using this kind of a technique. Okay. So once you have retrieved these documents, you essentially, that's your multimodal memory that you have retrieved. And now you basically pass this extra document. This is one of those documents that has been retrieved, right? So uh, very similar uh, text. And then, you know, it also has an image. Okay. You pass this as input to the generator. Uh, and the generator will generate a very awesome output of this kind. So essentially, thereby satisfying the user's uh, text to image task. Okay. Now, what is this generator and, and how does that work? Well, the generator is a 2.7 billion parameter model. It's actually the CM3 generator, and that is why it's basically, um, you know, the model is called as RACM3. Okay. It's a transformer decoder model in general, and it is trained on the same 150 million text image pairs from the Lion data set that were also used to, uh, you know, populate the, uh, the, the first memory. Okay. Uh, that's that. So in fact, while training, the generator actually looked at two kinds of samples. So of course, it basically looked at 150 million such multimodal documents, but then those documents were given in two different ways. The first way is essentially uh, more of a you know um, text to image kind of a scenario. So you basically give the prompt as photo of a cat, colon, right? And the model is expected to output image. It, it's basically not expected to just output the token image, but act the actual image, right? And then, you know, uh, the second kind of uh, uh, instances that were input while training uh, this model were, were of this kind. So yeah, basically uh, the model is given as input photo of image, the actual image, and then a token infill. OK, so it's basically given a token infill and then that's that's all. That's where the input stops. And then the model is supposed to generate a cat saying that, yes, I mean, you know, this is basically for the image to text task, you know, saying that, hey, given the image, it should be able to understand that it's a cat. So that's that, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, both of these kinds of uh, uh, inputs are derived from the same data set of 150 million pairs. Uh, where, for example, if you wanted to derive the second input from the first one, all you would do is uh, mask out this a uh, cat, you know, move it to as an infill token, and then move this a cat to the end, thereby uh, coming up with the with the output with the text to be generated. Okay. 
So that's that. So that is how this model, this generator model has been trained at runtime. Of course, you know, after you have retrieved documents, so you take those retrieved documents and remember they can be up to three multimodal retrieved documents. Uh, in fact, in fact, there could be up to two. So zero, one or two. So you may not retrieve anything. You may retrieve one document. You may retrieve two multimodal documents. That's what they support, right? So, so for example, in this case, you see that there are two retrieved documents, right? Um, and uh, you know, of course, there are also images to be encoded. So the images they've encoded using 1024 tokens uh, uh, obtained using the VQGAN framework. Okay, so it's a it's a good model. It's a complicated model, uh, not so complicated, moderately complicated model, which makes use of several moving components. Right, the first one is uh, the clip model for uh, encoding. Uh, both the documents and the query, and then a bi-encoder architecture, so as to do retrieval on top of that, and then the other technology piece it uses is MIPS from FES, uh, right? And then it uses the, um, uh, it, it uses the CM3 generator architecture, and for encoding images, it basically uses VQGAN framework, okay? So that's that. Um, now, these retrieved documents are concatenated uh, or prepended with the main document uh, or, or, the, or the query, and then they are given as input to the transformer decoder model, right? Now the transformer decoder model essentially, uh, of course, also comes up with semantic tokens for the original input that is provided, and therefore they compute the loss not just for the main document to be produced, but also for the retrieved documents. Okay, so remember in most RAG models, uh, people compute loss only for the main document, but here they also incorporate the loss for the retrieved documents. Uh, I mean, the idea is that basically the retrieved document should also be good enough so as to essentially uh, come up with the final uh, good main document. Okay. Uh, they um, uh, so uh, in fact they uh, you know have a weightage so essentially you have uh, uh, the loss for the main document plus alpha times the loss uh, for the retrieved documents which is essentially used um, in in this particular task. Okay. Um, so that's that. Uh, again, uh, the retrievals are scored. Uh, you know, the retrievals are chosen not just because of a high cosine similarity score coming from the face index, but they also prefer to choose multimodal documents over just unimodal documents, right? Just text or just images, right? Uh, and then uh, they also ensure diversity in these retrieved documents. Uh, basically, the idea is that given a query, you don't want to choose documents which are exactly the same as the query. So they take documents, multimodal documents, which have cosine similarity of less than equal to 0.9. And also they ensure, uh, uh, you know, that that the documents that they uh, uh, that, that the query that they pass to the retriever uh, essentially has a dropout in it. So, for example, you might really, you know, remove the word sitting and then retrieve a document. Then you might remove a word near or, you know, bench and then retrieve the, another document and so on. So that's how they ensure that there is a, uh, that there are relevant documents which are retrieved. There are diverse documents, um, uh, you know, which are retrieved and also multimodal documents in that sense. OK, so that's that. Now, if you compare with other architectures which have been proposed, you know, for example, DALI or Party, right? DALI 2 or Imagine, Reimagine, Flamingo, uh, Meta LM, Murag, you know, this, uh, there have been several models which have been proposed for uh, uh, various kinds of image to text or text to image tasks, right? Um, several of them are image generation based only. So, for example, Flamingo and Murag, these two models basically don't generate text. Right? Several of them are just text generation only. So, basically, for example, DALI does not really generate uh, text, right? Uh, you know, or Reimagine also does not generate text; they generate images only. Right? But the nice part about this model is that it can, it is a very general purpose model. It can be used to generate text, or it can be used to generate images also. And of course, it's a transformer decoder based model, so therefore it's autoregressive in nature, unlike uh, DALI 2 image and models, which are diffusion based in nature, right? So the constant war between diffusion and uh, autoregressive kind of models which is going on in the image generation model, uh, in, in the image generation world. Uh, but then anyway, uh, RSEM3 is basically autoregressive in nature. Um, and uh, and uh, what people have been able to show with models like RSEM3 is that even autoregressive models uh, can be very efficient in terms of training uh, given retrieval augmentation. Okay, so it is of course retrieval augmentation based, and as we will see in the later few slides, it also supports in-context learning uh, for multimodal uh, kind of scenarios. Okay, so you know if you compare with uh, how so how does the RSEM3 model perform, right? So if we, uh, there is a comparison on caption to image tasks and image to caption tasks. Okay, uh, this comparison is done on MS Coco data. So as you observe on the left side, RSEM3 model is here on the y axis. Now on the x axis, you see training compute. How many uh, you know compute GPU hours did you spend to train this model? On the y axis, you see FID scores. Okay, uh, now. Um, FID scores basically the lower the better. So the lower scores mean better model, right? So that's that. And this image generation clearly, remember, okay? 
So what you observe is that RSEM3 is right here. So it can achieve very good, uh, you know, uh, much lower FID scores compared to CM3, uh, the, the CM3 pre-trained model or the DALI model. OK, so so lower is better, remember. So therefore, it is better compared to DALI. OK, uh, it's, uh, you know, if you compare with party, of course, it's not that well. I mean, party is better in terms of FID scores. However, note that party model actually takes insanely large amount of compute, several X, you know, a large amount of compute compared to RSEM3 model. Hey, even if you compare with DALI 3 model, you know, RACM3 actually takes a 3x smaller compute power and also is 3x smaller in size compared to the DALI model. Okay? So therefore, you know, it's a good model, uh, RACM3. You know, it of course does not really get you the state of the art uh, uh, FID scores. However, it gets you very good FID scores considering the, considering the amount of compute power that is used uh, and also the size of the overall model. Okay. Now, if you look at the image to caption generation task compared with any of these uh, existing models, RSEM3 actually gives you state of the art scores. Uh, uh, well, I mean, if you really compare with 80 billion model, it doesn't really give you very good, uh, uh, I mean, CID, uh, uh, the CIDR scores, you know, for, for the image to caption generation task. But if you really compare it with any of the other models, uh, except this uh, uh, massive 80 billion model, you know, RSEM3 gives you really good CIDR scores as well. Yeah. So that was the you know formal comparison. Now let's look at other kind of in context learning kind of scenarios, right? So um, uh, I mean, or rather, let's just look at a typical uh, scenario of multimodal generation. So essentially, uh, you have this uh, caption to image generation task. You give a caption as input, a Ming Dynasty vase with orange flowers painted, right? Uh, the nice part is that uh, this model actually gets this image as, uh, uh, or rather, this multimodal document as a retrieved document and therefore is able to really generate this awesome output. You know, so all of these carvings that you see are really about Ming Dynasty, uh, right? Uh, uh, unlike the baselines, uh, you know, stable diffusion or Venla CM3, which give you not so awesome, not so awesome output. Of course, they give you vases. They give you Chinese looking vases, but not really Ming Dynasty vases, okay? Similarly, if you look at the photo of Kalanish standing stones, fireworks in the sky, you know, you basically get really, really good uh, output from RACM3 because of this awesome document that is uh, mined from the from the in-context memory. Okay. Uh, again, you know, there, there are more examples, but the idea is that for knowledge intensive multimodal generation, in the sense that when you have these entity names, specific entity names as part of your input caption, you can actually generate really, really awesome uh, images, um, more accurate images from the RACM3 model. Okay. Now let's talk about those kinds of uh, uh, tasks where you ask for uh, outputs which are unconventional, right? So for example, French flag waving on the moon's surface. Now and that's unconventional. You typically see a US flag, right? And that is why if you ask this, uh, if you give this caption and ask your baseline models, they give you like a US flag on the moon surface, right? But the RSEM3 model really, you know, uh, does very good, uh, 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 very good generation thanks to the input that is taking from the retrieval, retrieval memory, right? Uh, similarly, you can ask a question like photo of Statue of Liberty standing next to the Washington Monument. Now, clearly there is nothing of that kind. Uh, I mean, or rather it doesn't really exist in reality, but then uh, the RSEM3 model is able to generate an image of that kind as well. Okay. Uh, so there are four more examples of interesting tasks on this slide, and I'll talk about them one by one. So let's talk about image infilling. So as you already know, image infilling task is basically, you know, you uh, the input is this, there is a masked image, and you want to fill in this thing, uh, which such that it matches with the context of the remaining part of the image that is not masked, right? So, uh, so remember, this is only for uh, uh, the source image is only for uh, telling you what was the actual source image from which which this uh, masked image was created, right? It's not given as input. Okay, so the input is this masked image, and if you look at the RSEM3 output, you know it it is basically able to generate really good output of this kind with the the skis nicely drawn, and uh, you know uh, it's it's a pretty realistic output, right? But on the other hand, if you basically just took the output from vanilla CM3, you basically find that uh, where is the ski? The ski part is missing, okay? Of course, it's re able to replicate the snow and knows that the man should have uh, legs and so on, but it's, it's missing the skis, right? And again, RSEM3 really performs really nicely because of this context, which is retrieved, uh, um, uh, very relevant context that is retrieved, which helps it to generate the skis and uh, uh, in the board and so on, everything accurately. Now here is yet another uh, uh, output, which is about uh, um, controlled image generation. So essentially, it's about, also about uh, image infilling, um, uh, uh, or other, yeah, it, this is also about image infilling, but in the context of another image, right? So essentially, uh, for example, if you essentially uh, look at this masked image, so remember again, these are the source images. You don't need, really need to give them as input, okay? 
So if you look at this mass image, is given as input to the retrieval augmented uh, to, to RACM3 model. Okay. And in this case, rather than actually, um, uh, you know, using the retriever, you disable the retriever, but uh, the user also provides another context image. OK, so the user says that, hey, I want to infill this image, but then please use the context from this image. The idea is that the user is in some way saying that, hey, I want a red jacket here, right? So basically use the tone, use the uh, use the you know input image, a context image, which is user supplied. Remember, this is not retrieved, this is user supplied image, and the user wants to control the output in a way such that, uh, you know, when you infill this guy, you know, you must use a red jacket. So this is the output that RSEM3 is able to produce, okay? So remember, this output is not retrieved. This output is actually generated by the uh, RSEM3 model, which is a combination of, uh, you know, this retrieval augmentation with CM3, right? So that's that. Now, you know, here is another example. Here is a image which a with a masked part at the top, and then you say, hey, please use the context from here to actually, uh, you know, fill in. And it's able to nicely fill in, uh, you know, uh, this parachute uh, part at the top um, and, and give you a very, very satisfactory, uh, awesome output. OK, here is another control text generation kind of uh, uh, scenario. So essentially you have here the input is a text. Here is input is basically just this caption. Uh, photo of a house taken on an autumn day. Now, you know, there could be several such images, photo of whatever house taken on an autumn day, but uh, uh, you and, and you know, uh, these are also valid outputs, but then what the user wants is uh, the user wants the output to be controlled by these, by the style in these two images, okay? So therefore the user says, I want this kind of a house and I want this kind of autumn. And of course, you know, there are so many autumn trees that you can represent, right? And RACM3 really takes uh, cares about, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the context, the multimodal context that is supplied by the user and then it says okay i'll take your images i'll take your text and i'll basically give you an image which uh, satisfies both the constraints uh, given by the style in the text in the, in the image and and the words in the text okay while well, the baselines basically do not incorporate the style at all okay similarly you can basically say that hey i want painting of red roses but then hey i want this kind of stuff to be there in that painting uh, now, if you really look at this output, this is the baseline output. This is some painting of red roses, but this is clearly a much more uh, accurate painting of red roses, which conforms to the style as provided by the user in the in the image context. Okay. Now, here is the, the last application that I'm going to talk about, and this is specifically uh, to focus on the in-context learning aspect of this multimodal RACM3 model. Okay. So you uh, essentially see this. Uh, 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 input uh, and in fact here the task is essentially image classification. So you have uh, uh, images belonging to two different classes, you know, uh, let's say dog and cat. And uh, you essentially uh, here the uh, way you supply the input is basically not to use a retriever, but just to use the uh, generator aspect. OK, so you essentially give this as the input. You give these as input. You say this is the image and you say this is animal X. You don't really tell it dog or cat. You, know, you stay. Uh, of, uh, you know, you stay aloof of uh, um, of of the actual uh, class labels, but just give it as X or Y, right? So this is a X, this is Y, and then you basically give this dog image and the, then say animal, uh, and then say fill in the blank, right? So you tell the RSEM3 model, tell me whether I should fill X or Y there, right? And then RSEM3 model basically can do something here. So this is basically called one shot learning. So it's basically one shot learning because you're giving one example here. Now you could do few shot learning. By essentially doing this, you could basically say that, hey, um, you know, if this is the image, is animal X, this is the image, is animal Y, and then I give you a new image, and then I ask you to fill. Well, the idea is that you should fill it with X. You tell it that way, okay? And then you say that, hey, this is the image, this is animal X, this is the image, animal Y, this is the image, this is animal underscore, or, or rather, you know, um, uh, fill in the blank, right? And then basically the idea is that the model should be able uh, to predict what should be the output here. Yeah, what should be the output here? So notice that uh, this is more like a, um, um, if, you, if you notice here, the image, the query image is basically repeated, but then uh, what you give is a two short. So this is two short examples. So essentially, you've already given, you know, two examples of both the classes here, yeah? So now you can control this by K. So you can actually do two short, one short, or four short and eight short. Now, of course, this is one short, this is two short, right? Uh, so I've shown those examples. And what you observe is that if you do this with baseline CM3 model versus you do it with RACM3 model, RACM3 model gives you way better accuracy, right? And the accuracy actually increases with increase in K, right? As K increases, the accuracy increases. Yeah, which is very, very nice, which basically is exactly in context learning, right? So K short in context learning, few short in context learning, 
um, uh, showing really good gains, especially uh, you know, for this for the simple image classification task. Of course, more detailed, um, uh, more detailed, uh, 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 rigorous experimentation needs to be done across more image classification tasks. But at least for the simple task that they, they observe, that the accuracy was really good. OK, so that's about RSEM3. In this video, I talked about retrieval augmented CM3 model, uh, which is the first which was which was the first retrieval augmented multimodal model uh, that can retrieve and refer to an external multimodal memory for generating multimodal outputs, both images and text. Uh, it uses a multimodal retriever using pre-trained clip. It uses a uh, rag based. Uh, uh, it, it does rag and uh, with uh, a CM3 generator, uh, it, it does retrieval augmented generation with CM3 uh, transformer uh, decoder only CM3 architecture, right? Uh, and what they showed is that RAG is actually uh, this this model, uh, you know, uh, uh, RACM3 model is way better compared to DALI and CM3 on both image and caption generation tasks. Specifically, uh, it was able to obtain 12 as the FID score and 17 as a CIDR score on MS COCO, which is way better compared to DALI and CM3. Uh, while required, while you know, uh, uh, on the other hand, the model is 3x smaller in size and uh, requires 30% less compute power compared to DALI, right, for training. Uh, it is also the first model that can perform in context learning for both text and image generation tasks. Uh, it exhibits novel capabilities such as knowledge intensive image generation, uh, controlled image generation, multimodal in context learning. Okay. In fact, RSEM3 went on to become uh, a, a base model uh, for the popular Chameleon model, which has come up recently from Meta AI. Um, and uh, a multimodal retrieval augmented generation is clearly a green area now. OK, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.